Hi, in this video we're going to talk about how to use a class. So, a quick note here uh, with this slide titled Classes in OOP. OOP is short for Object Oriented Programming. So in Java, when we think in terms of Object Oriented Programming, everything is a class. The world is about classes and objects. So, in Object Oriented Programming, a bank is a class. If we want to write an application to model a bank, a bank is a class. It may store bank accounts and people might be able to add money or withdraw from the bank. A document is a class. If we want to write an application to model a document like Google Docs, a document is a class. It may have a title and an author and a text and you'll be able to edit the text. The class, remember, the design of the class is always about what's the state? What's the state? What's the data associated with it? And what's the behavior? What can that class do? So let's talk about using a class as a client. So classes are often a very nice way to bundle up functionality. If someone else writes a class, you can use it and you don't need to know exactly how it all works. And so when someone else does this, when they create a class and you can use that functionality of the class, that's called being a client of the class. So this is a really important topic and a really important way of using abstraction. Someone can write the class, provide functionality to you, and you can just use it without understanding how it works. So for example, we've already written the rectangle class. And if you want to use the rectangle class, all I need to do is give you information about how to use it, how to make new rectangles, and how to call methods on that class. Here I have a uh, screenshot of the Java docs or the documentation created from this rectangle class and this tells you what's the info you need to know to use it. Here's another class called the randomizer class that we've created that you can use to get random numbers, to get random integers or random doubles or random booleans. And you can use this class, you can be a client of this class without understanding how it all works as long as you know how to use the documentation. And here's one more example of the geolocation class. And a geolocation class represents a uh, geolocation basically with a given latitude and longitude. And you can do things like calculate distances between other uh, geolocations without even needing to know how this class is implemented. So with this idea in mind, let's go into our editor and use these classes as a client. Okay. So here we have our rectangle class, which lets us make rectangles and get the area and get the height and width of rectangles. What I've done here is written a program that lets us figure out, um, you know, what are rectangles, what are some dimensions of rectangles that have the same area as a 50 by 50 square. And so here um, we've created a rectangle called square, which is a new rectangle with that's 50 by 50. And then we'll print out the area of that square. And then we're going to do a for loop from 0 to 500, um, up, going up by 5, and you know do a double for loop there. So we're varying both the width and height. And then we're going to make a rectangle with those dimensions. And then we'll just say, hey, was the area of our current rectangle the same as that square? If it was, then we know it has the same dimensions. And so using the class in this way, we don't need to know how get area works, but we can still uh, do a lot of useful functionality with it. So if I run this code, you can see that we found all these rectangles, a 10 by 250, a 20 by 125, all these rectangles that have the same area as a 50 by 50 square. Now let's take a look at trying to use our randomizer class. So um, these are the methods that we have. We can see our methods in our, um, in our other class or in our documentation. And so here are the docs here. So if we go to randomizer, we can see how some of these methods work. Um, so what I'll say is to pick a random number up to 100, we'll say int num equals randomizer dot next int 100. And we'll print that out. Let's run that. Great. And now let's try, we can run it again to see if it's random. Now let's try rolling a six-sided die at 100 times. So we'll say for int i equals zero, i is less than 100, i plus plus, and then we'll say int roll equals 
randomizer.nextInt, and then we'll use the one that's inclusive between one and six. We'll print out the role. Let's run that. So there you go. We can say we're simulating uh, rolling the rolling the dice. And now we'll simulate a coin flip. And for this, we'll use uh, next boolean. So we'll say if randomizer next boolean, um, we'll say that was heads, and otherwise, we'll say. That was tails. So there you go. Now we're using randomizer as a client and we get all this functionality without needing to know how it's all implemented. Now we're going to write a program that makes use of the geolocation class. And so you can see in our files we have this geolocation class and we can get a little bit of an idea of how it works. And so we know we can make a geolocation um, by passing a latitude and longitude. And we'll show you more about how to read this documentation later. But um, you know we can make a geolocation by passing a, a latitude and longitude. And then we know we have a method that can get a geolocation, um, get the distance to another geolocation. So let's, using that, uh, write a program. And this program is going to tell us the distance between San Francisco and New York. So we'll say we're going to make a geolocation called San Francisco SF. And it's a new geolocation and we'll pass it in the latitude for San Francisco and the longitude for San Francisco. And then we'll make a geolocation for New York. That's a new geolocation. And we'll pass in the latitude and the longitude. So these numbers here, these are the constants that represent those latitudes and longitudes. And now we'll say, let's get the distance and we have a method here which is called distance from and it computes the distance from one geolocation object to another. So remember, geolocation is the class, right? And then SF and NYC, those are objects, those are instances of the class. So we'll say sf.distance from NYC. And we'll print that out and we'll say the distance from San Francisco to New York city is distance miles. If we run that, there you go. We see we can write these amazing programs, computing distances, just making use of the functionality of this geolocation class. So this uh, gives you an idea of how you can use classes as a client.